gosh, I want to say at least a decade. And a lot of the, the work that I was initially aware of came out of Missouri, and I saw it at, uh, presented at um, the American Society of Agronomy and thought, this is insane. <laughs> There's no way that this would be a viable system. Um, but again, through a lot of pioneering of farmers, farmers started to fool around with this. I know there's a group of farmers in Iowa that have done a lot of work on this. Um, and it does seem to have some promise. And again, the thought is that with the, um, the more um, high-density in-row spacing, that we can get the same number of plants per acre, so not compromise our yield, but that we could get more light interception. Um, and I think this system, a lot of it goes back to what are your goals and how does it integrate more um, broadly into your farming operation. So in, in the typical corn that we grow, um, like on the 30-inch rows, we're usually, we go a little bit higher with our plant populations, probably about 32,000 plants per acre. Here, we're, we're also aiming for that same population, but we're setting the planter so that we're essentially, you know, planting at like a 60,000 plant per acre density. So instead of the, the corn plants being um, whatever the spacing would be, seven inches apart, they're three and a half inches apart. So very, very close together. Um, and again, what I think farmers have seen the value of this is as they're thinking about soil health and cover crops, thinking of this as a way to integrate more cover crops in the system. And definitely farmers that are interested in grazing in the fall have been very, very excited about these systems. Um, so there's been or get, or conventional farmers that have tried this. Um, here we have the corn. And then the soybeans we have as a crop here, but the soybeans aren't intended, at least in this model system, to be harvested as soybeans. They're meant in there as a cover crop. So they're um, a very late maturity group. I think they're, Ben, do you remember? Are they three point something? Okay. But they're, they're way longer maturity than what we would typically recommend in Wisconsin. Because we're really looking for a big, bushy bean that's going to put on biomass. It's going to help suppress weeds. It's going to help bring carbon back into the soil. So when we think about harvesting this, we're not worried about combining the beans. Again, we're using this more as a model system of a cover crop that's going to be a legume. It's going to help build soil health. It's going to shade out the weeds. We do do cultivation to this system. So because this is on alternating 30s, we can still do our typical um, tide weeding, rotary hoeing, row cultivation. Um, but there's farmers that are doing diverse mixes. They're going in. They're grazing these systems. So last year was our first year doing this. This is our second year in this system. Um, and Leah can correct me if I'm wrong with the numbers here, hopefully. Um, but last year was a phenomenal year for us at the station in general. We had just great results, um, great yields. And in both the um, 30 and 60 inch rows, I think we were in the 170s, 180 bushel an acre range for yields. So um, they were within like five bushel an acre. One really interesting thing that was noted though, that both Leon and Mike pointed out was in September, um, when these were, just before these were harvested, there was a big storm that came through. So what was observed in the field, um, which was the field that we hopefully we'll be able to stop at, that was weed zapped, which is a weedy mess, but a lot of it's volunteer corn too, because of what we saw happened, was a 30 inch corn actually like went down flat. So the, um, the, the harvest of that was probably about 180, 182 bushel an acre, but it could have been even higher because we lost a lot of corn on the ground. The, the 60 inch corn actually was fairly similar in yield, but it all stayed standing. So it's interesting that that phenomenon seemed to happen in the field where the 60 inch corn seemed to have better standability against that extreme weather in the, the fall. So be interesting to see this year. First of all, if the corn goes flat again, but it's due to a September storm, maybe an August storm. Um, and if how close our yields are, but they both yielded very, very well. I know we're heading back, my. <laughs> so we should get back on the wagons, and we will talk about organic no-till inside, and then hopefully we'll pass and we'll come back outside.